Welcome to the One Hero Podcast, where we answer Malaysians' burning questions about personal finance with fact-based answers. If you don't know it yet, Malaysians above 40 can now apply for a low interest rate personal loan under something called EPF, FASA 2. You can borrow anywhere between 3,000 ringgit and 50,000, depending on how much you have in your EPF account too. The question is, given the chance to apply for this loan, should you go ahead or should you stop and consider the alternatives? Welcome back to the One Hero Podcast. In today's episode, we're zooming into the fine details of the EPF FSA 2 to ask some hard questions that may help you to decide if this loan is for you. So John, what makes taking a loan out under the EPF FASA 2 so much more attractive than just taking out a loan the conventional way? I think it's because of the interest rate. I think uh, what they are providing versus that of a normal personal loan is much more uh, palatable, for the lack of a better word. Um, if you go to uh, banks like Bank Right, yeah, they, they're very famous for their personal loans. Um, not predatory. When I say predatory, means you're talking about interest rates of double digit to to yeah. to you know high single digit to double digits, or sometimes even like thirty percent effective rate. Wow. Whereas for the FSA two, uh, you're talking about anywhere between five to they cap it at fifteen percent, and we'll go more into that when we talk about the 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 band and the calculations later, lah, Louis. But I think in terms of attractiveness, it's definitely the interest rate and also um, allowing the members to actually not withdraw and to lose out on the power of compounding. La. So, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe um, rather so that's than... A, I mean, just, just that, I mean, no other benefit. Uh, yeah, uh, I can't okay. think of I, I, I mean, I, I don't know, yeah. saving money in this economy is always a good thing. I think like if we can save 10 ringgit even I think it's good but it's, it's definitely more than 10 ringgit like given what's the like okay let's say we, we have some predatory loans 30 30 percent right versus like a 5 15 percent range be much much more attractive but with this kind of like unconventional benefits right I would say come some unconventional risks as well right what what kind of risks are borrowing borrowers looking at in exchange for this lowered interest rate? There's, there's definitely not, no such thing as a free lunch. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I think, you see, EPF money, because it is kind of soaked away on your behalf rather than you consciously putting money in. Mm-hmm. And I think people tend to be a little bit more complacent. I'm not, obviously I'm generalizing, but I'm saying that um, people tend to be a little bit more complacent. And people say, hey, it's my money. But they didn't feel the kind of like the pain soaking that away. And somehow or rather it does encourage a little bit more, hi yeah, let's let's go for the loan and things like that. You know, it's it's like it's not as painful as saving money. Like what you said, it's saving money is hard, you know. Yeah. EPF is like it's kind of done for you, discipline for mm-hmm. you. And people may take uh, a little bit more gung ho risk, uh, I would say. Uh second thing is for those who may not have taken uh, personal loans before, um, by them, you know, doing this for the first time, um, there is a risk of the default and then getting blacklisted. And you know, um, they they you they were FAQs, you know, uh, frequently asked questions in the EPF list. Um, can can I get bankrupt because I took this loan, whatever? Think of it, guys. It is a personal loan. Okay. The beauty of it is that. Um, at the age of 55 or whatever age that you decide to withdraw, um, the early withdrawal from your EPF account too, that will actually help you to settle. But then it, I, that mechanism still doesn't change the habit of the person, if you get what I mean, uh, Louis. That makes sense. I, I think when, when I look at things like this, right, loans and, and then having it tied to you know, your EPF, which is supposed to be something that helps you in your retirement, Mm. I feel there's always some risk like, for those who already don't have a good habit of paying back loans. Or... Correct. That's precisely my point. Mm. <laughs> the other thing is we are looking at it and most more when we come to the calculation, we are looking at it with a projection of the low interest rate environments that we are experiencing today. Mm. Now, whether that interest rate will go up or down, remember, 
they are allowed to go all the way until 15% in the cap. And once you see the calculation later, then you realize the importance of understanding that interest rate band that you're going to pay yeah, for, for the loan. And do remember that the tenure is also shorter. It's about 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I think I think there are also risks like from a personal and financial point of view. I think, yeah, we can we can look at it once we get to the calculation. So the next thing is that okay, we 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 from EPF's reports, right? They've received over 74,000 applications. Half of these applications actually got accepted. These are people who did get their loans. Mm. I think mm. the figure is about 774 million that was approved. Yeah, 722 million, I think. Oh, 22 million. Okay. Yeah. So that was that's quite a big figure. I, I can't help but imagine, you know, like what the rest will do. Like if they really needed that money, right? What can they do? You know, if yeah. if if this was the last chance, they felt okay. I'm I'm sure like there are reckless people who have applied and got approved for it, but I'm also very sure that there are people who applied and actually needed that kind of help. Precisely. So let's say they didn't get that loan, right? What what can they do? Is there something other loans in the market that can match what this um EPF FASA 2 is offering? Yeah, um, actually Bank Rakyat actually does uh, quite a good job in extending personal loans. I think that if you have a quite a good credit rating or credit score, they do they do not uh, they do provide uh, I think less than double digit kind of interest rates. I haven't checked because I've never taken a personal loan uh, from Bank Rakyat before. Um, that that's an alternative. Uh, I do know that other banks. Uh, provide as well. I know CMB, I got hit uh, by social media advertisements for personal loans. Those are alternatives, uh, I would say. Um, more importantly is this, uh, actually there's many alternatives. It's just whether you have the skill set or the ability to differentiate uh, and to calculate. Because the sad to say, uh, the calculation is actually very important because the difference mm -hmm. in between uh the understanding or the terms of the interest rate is it is it compounding per month is it compounding per year is it an effective rate or is it just a simple rate all these play a matter because at the end of the day if you get your interest rate wrong the amount you're paying may 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 be so much more different from uh one loan to the other i don't know whether i'm making sense to you or not uh, louis yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have never taken out personal loan myself, uh, but mm. I can see why some people would do that. And I also agree um, that a lot of people take out loans without understanding the full spectrum of Correct. what they are getting. I think when when you when you go to the banks, right, they, they'll definitely provide you the tables whatsoever, but... Uh, not definite, unless you ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? Not, not definitely? No, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so let's say, you know, you go to a bank and they don't even provide you that, right? Maybe that information is hidden from you. You ask certain questions and it seems to be okay, but in fact, you don't have the whole, the full picture, right? And I think that's why it's very important for us to run the figures, right? So yes, run the yes. figures, like for John to explain some of the terms involved and from here, you can then decide, okay, if, if this don't actually make sense for you. A lot of people yeah. I find yeah. don't don't really run these figures. They only think about the money they can get now. Correct. No, <laughs> absolutely right. I mean, put it this way, when I've let's use even a, a very typical example, right? Yeah. When I bought my first car, which is like 37 years old, I was kind of like financially savvy and all that kind of thing. Mm. But prior to that, you know, when my uh, my girlfriend at that time, now my wife, actually bought her first car, uh, Kalisa. When I look through the agreement, uh, the higher purchase agreement, uh, there is buried within all the terms. Only then you see a table, you know, to show you the calculation. Oh, so see. you see, right? Un unless and until you go and seek that information out and you know what to seek, only then you you know about it. Like, like, uh how a car higher purchase loan is calculated versus a home loan is calculated versus a, how a credit card interest is calculated. It's very different, you know. 
So people are just think 5%. So for them, it's like, oh, loan amount multiplied by 5% multiplied mm -hmm. by 10 year, right? And and that's also scary because sometimes you if you if you don't look at it now, right, you will have to look at it one day, five years yeah. from now, and like, oh, how come I'm paying this? Uh? Yes, yes, yes. I'm a very numbers-oriented person, so when I yeah. bought my first car, it was a saga like when I was in university. I actually looked at all the figures because I wanted to make sure that I know how much am I paying up to the end. I yeah. need to make sure because, because like I had this very one bad experience that I had a close family member pay like I don't know what they call that the interest rate keeps changing, floating rate lah. Uh, for a car, yeah. what is very rare? No, no, a house, a house. Ah, 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 a house, ah, right? ah. Okay, so yeah, that and 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 it just kept going up and it actually like exceeded their um rental income. Mm. So it just scared me. I make sure to you know have a look at or oh, every single monthly payment. The yeah. Person did yeah. not, so that was a mistake. Okay, so I think uh, right now we want to spend most of our discussion today around the calculations, which I think is probably the most important part if you're considering this loan or if you have actually taken out this loan to think yeah. about. Yeah. Okay, so maybe um I want to read out the premise of uh, EPF FSA yeah. 2 first. Uh, this is actually a loan extended based on your account to EPF account to balance. Mm -hmm. For you to for you to uh, qualify, you must have a minimum of three thousand in account to, and the minimum financing rate equivalently is three thousand as well. Okay, maximum is fifty thousand. The tenure of the loan is ten years. So regardless, uh, first phase is anyone that's forty and above. Okay. Uh, and the tenure of the loan is 10 years. Uh, so if you're exactly at 40, that means uh, 10 years will be to 50 years old. Okay. So there's only the banks are the ones responsible for the operations, administration, and also dispensing. And currently, there's only two banks, MBSB and Bank Simpana National, BSN. Okay. Now, um, once the loan is actually approved, the members need to submit an advance notice for withdrawal from 50 to 55, conditional withdrawal, okay? Now, even though the amount in account two is not used as a collateral for the loan, uh, it is the priority of the payment from this withdrawal, it will be used to pay off the loan that the bank is dispensing to you. So at that point of time, uh, in a way you cannot avoid to say, hey, you took out the loan with MBSB or BSN mm -hmm. and you took that amount and you did not repay at all, okay? Or you repaid partially and there's still a certain balance. Um, the moment the withdrawal uh, notice uh, takes into effect and the money go comes out from EPF, the priority is to pay off the loan based on the accumulated dividends and the original principal in your EPF account too, okay? So while during the period of which um you take the loan and the e the money is still in epf that's not a collateral but the moment it is withdrawn uh it is prioritized to pay off the loan so i wanted to set that premise first okay now um there is actually a a, a mechanism to ensure there's a cap there's a ceiling cap so right now the interest rate for the loan is based on two key parameters Okay, one is based on what we call an overnight policy rate. That, that's the rate that the central bank determines what you get, you and I get for fixed, fixed deposit, Louis, right? Mm. It's a floating rate. That means every quarter, Bank Negara will determine whether the interest rate goes up, remains the same, or comes down, right? So the rate uh, that is currently being charged is actually 4.5%. Okay, uh, it is actually the floating rate plus 1.75. I'm going to show it um, uh, on the screen right now. So if you can see over here, what do I get in this product? The maximum financing amount is 50,000 and the minimum is 3,000. The financing tenure is 10 years. The profit rate that the bank makes is actually the SBR plus a 1.75, okay? The SBR is the floating rate, right? the ceiling profit rate is 15%. That means 
the moment the floating rate goes higher and higher, the moment it hits 15, it will not go above that. It's capped already. Maximum is 15%. Okay. The current SBR rate is 2.75. So 2.75 plus 1.75, you get 4.5%. Okay. So let's just say you took a loan of 50,000 based on a 4.5 rate. These are the calculations for your monthly repayment. Let me zoom in uh, so you guys can see. For the first 12 months, okay, you pay 187. This is just to pay off interest. And the 13 month onwards, that means second year onwards, you pay the full installment of 564. Okay. And the final month, it is 551. Now, the total amount paid, you remember you took a principal of 50, right? At the interest rate of or the profit rate of 4.5, at the end of the loan amount, you 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 paid. 63,000. That means you pay roughly about 13,000 in interest. 13,100 interest. Okay. Now it says here selling price based on ceiling profit rate. So 98,891 is based on a ceiling rate of 15%. So let's just say the interest rate rises, 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 and then it gets kept at 15. You borrow 50, but you're paying back double. Wow. 90. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 15. But so, that's that's yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I just want to like clarify. There's I mean, the the four point five is for this year, is it? The four point five is based on prevailing uh rates. Oh, at the moment. Okay. At the okay. moment. So let's just say Bank Nagara increases the overnight policy rate by another point two five. Okay, two hundred fifty basis points. So hmm. it's two point seven five. It becomes three. Well, I mean, plus 1.75, so you'll be paying four, uh, three plus 1.75. So if your if your floating rate goes up to ten, then the bank takes uh SBR plus 1.75, ma. So it becomes 11.75. Then you go and put it into the table, and then that that's way. So the biggest risk is actually interest rates, ah. Okay, so my question is, what determines the SBR? Ha, it makes okay. it go up and down. That, okay, that's a <laughs> that's a big kind of worms that warrants another <laughs> long to short economic condition of the country, uh, confidence that the central bank has with the economy, and inflation rate. Usually, this this these three things. So, if in inflation rate is high, how do uh, central banks around the world uh, use this as a lever? Is they try to increase interest rates so that uh, people don't spend as much right people don't 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 spend as much. demand or things will come down and because of that then uh, how I say it's cooling down of the economy because mm. uh, banks are charging very high interest rates for loans people wouldn't expand people wouldn't go crazy about spending all that kind of thing is to tame down this demand oh, yeah. so, so in that case would it also go down? Like now it's two point. Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. yes. So mm -hmm. like, if you've seen what the what has happened in the US, interest rates has risen dramatically. But to be honest, even at the rates of four or five percent in the US, right, it is not as high as historical highs. It, interest rate at one time in the US during Paul Volcker time, um, it was it went as high as almost nine percent or even higher. I can't remember. I have to go to the back, but it was really high. Yeah. I've lived through and in uh, in Malaysia itself, I've lived through interest rates of um yeah, nine, ten percent for housing loan. Mm, when yeah. I was a teenager. Yeah, we discussed that in the last yeah, episode. Earlier. Correct. It's very correct. interesting. I, I mean we well, I, I mean do other personal loans also work this way? Do do they use SBI in their calculations too? It all depends. It goes from bank to bank. Most okay. of the time, um, it is actually a floating rate, but mm. there are times when it's also a fixed rate. Like for credit card, it's fixed. So yeah, if you were right. to draw parallel, credit mm. card, uh, if you take margins from credit cards, that's a, 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 a very typical uh, personal loan kind of mechanism where uh, they charge you straight upfront 15%. And it snowballs mm. up because you're mm. paying... Yeah. Yeah. You're paying your interest snowballs. So let's say you get charged, let's say you owe the bank 10k, right? They mm. charge you 15%. Mm. Okay. But you pay minimum. Mm. So <laughs> the interest that the credit card charge you gets lumped together into the principal and then it snowballs again. 
Correct. You see? Yeah. It's, it's in this case, for them, uh. yeah, it's compounding for debt, you know, not compounding for investment. So just think about it. Uh, credit card debts are the worst that you ever want to touch. Uh, because, you know, there was a time when I had a friend, a very close friend, um, and he was asking my advice on investing. So I said, Mr. So-and-so, uh, can you show me your entire portfolio? What, what you have, what you owe. Uh, he had some 20,000 in unit trust. Uh, I think another few thousand in other investments here and there. But he had uh, 83,000 in credit card debts. 83,000 in... How, what, what, did, what did he do to get into that kind of debt though? He, it was into some um, binary option trading and he oh. lost money and oh. he had to pay it off oh. using credit card. And Easy. I told him, forget about investments. Forget about unit trust. Forget about whatever wants to grow your money because I can only guarantee you one thing. The credit card interest rate is, is guaranteed. <laughs> Correct. Whatever Correct. investment return is not guaranteed. So pay off mm -hmm. that first. Forget about investing. Forget about growing your money. Forget about you know savings. Just, just get mm -hmm. rid of that first. Because that one is guaranteed, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the beauty about this one is um, I think the one is uh, it's not snowballing. Mm -hmm. It's not snowballing. Interest rates will rise uh, even though it's floating. It's, it's rise or not. But it's, it's not snowballing because... Uh, ah, Okay, I shouldn't say that as well. Uh. Um, it, it, it is somewhat, but I I I think it is not as predatory as fifteen percent. <laughs> mm -hmm. True, yeah. because because I mean they're charging fifteen percent regardless, right? But yes. this, you know, when when the interest rates are low, you get a lower rate. Yes. So we, as long as we don't get into like a a worse uh, environment, then yeah. we can hope the best uh, at least at least the chance is there right versus Correct. like with the credit card confirm you won't have any like rate below 15 percent. correct 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 yeah so i hope you guys are clearer now obviously we're not going to go through the table one by one and to look at the, all the scenarios um for those of you interested just go type mbsb epf loan look for this thing called the product disclosure sheet the calculations are there. For those of you more math-oriented, you want to plot it into an Excel, uh, you can actually use this Excel formula called effective. So it's just equals effect. And then you can put in the parameters, which is the, the, the nominal interest rate against uh, and also the, the duration, which is 10 years. And you can build your table from there. Lah. But the premise is actually very simple. If at the prevailing interest rate of 4.5, you borrow 50, after 10 years, you pay back 63, provided interest rates don't change. So you're actually paying 13,000 plus in interest. If doomsday kind of doomsday scenario happen and it goes all the way to ceiling, you're borrowing 50, you're paying back 98, which is one for one. Uh. <laughs> over 10 years. Uh, over 10 years. Has that ever happened though, John? I mean, has the, have, have we touched that ceiling before? 15%. Credit card law? Credit card law? But personal oh, loan. Other than that, no. Uh, I've. I'm just, I'm just thinking about like the pos possibility of that happening. You know, historically speaking, I'm I'm sure we can't use history to project the future, but does give us a bit of comfort. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has. Look at the Asian financial crisis. Uh, oh. I I've 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 seen, and I've uh, okay so. <laughs> I hope he's, he's okay that I quote him here, but he's a good friend, uh, Dato Stewart LeBroy. So he was CEO and chairman of uh, Axis REIT. So REITs, you know, they buy properties to actually, and then they pay out the rentals in terms in the form of dividend to shareholders. So for them, they need to take on a lot of finance uh, facilities because they have to buy properties, okay? So what happened was during the 97 crisis, he was getting call from his bankers every two days because the interest rate has risen. So can you imagine all the calculations? So it's overnight, uh, your interest rate triple or double, uh, a double or triple. Can you imagine? And mm. you have like a range or projected all your finances based on a certain interest rate. And then all of a sudden, it's just like like three times. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So it has I mean, happened to your question. It has happened before. <laughs> so so yeah. I think to the audience, um, 
you have to pro- when, when you do that calculation, right? When you do yeah. the project, you have to also predict the worst case scenario and correct. Correct. be prepared correct. for that. If that happens, are you okay with that? Yes. So yeah. so yeah, I think I think um that that about sums up our discussion. I just want to also like you know ask you a personal question, John. Mm-hmm. Given the opportunity, I think you're at that age range now where you can take that out, right? Would mm. you do it? Why? Why not? Okay. <laughs> now again, <laughs> you see when people come on social media, Louis, and I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna be upfront and honest with it. They're looking for specific answers. But the problem is specific answers does not apply to everyone because everyone's variability is is different. I'm at a stage where my EPF is in the eight figure. Some people they may may not even have like seven figures. Hey, sorry, not eight figures, sorry. <laughs> seven figures. <laughs> right. My EPF is in seven figures. And the uh skill sets that I have and the uh what do you call it? N- knowledge that I have is very different. So for me, um, I would take it out if uh, I know other investment vehicles that can actually give me better returns than five. That means I find an investment vehicle that can give me eight. Okay, Obviously, there's risk to it, but I'm paying a 5% or 4.5% interest rate. For those guys who this loan is targeted for, not for me, for, for those who really need it, I really think that instead of trying to invest it they should actually upgrade their skills because either upgrading your skills or starting a micro business that could these these are people who are laid off may not have a job may not have the certain skill sets to acquire a, a meaningful paying job and instead of like oh putting into some ponzi scheme or get rich ski scheme and they, and, they, and, and they don't need to do anything i rather that I hope that they actually take a loan to upskill themselves because it's 50k is not going to turn you into a multi-million overnight but it, it will certainly help kickstart a micro entrepreneur journey right food business i know this guy who sells nasi lama near the office that I, I i'm in he does a fantastic job he was telling me you know i have a chat with him he said right to start this business right all you need is hard work Yes, you need some capital to 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 buy, you know, your your ikan bilis or your eggs or whatever, right? But food business uh, is evergreen one. Yes, competition is rife, but if you charge a, a valuable price, you don't overcharge. You're consistent in your in turning up and opening up the store. You maintain certain quality for your food. People will come back, and I think that is a better way of using the money rather than you know investing it for those who. Who, who got laid off or whatever. I don't know whether I told you this story before, Louis. When KLA 1 was built, after it finished, there were a few contractors, Chinese contractor friends. Mm-hmm. And it was during the Asian financial crisis also. And they didn't, they, they, they had no, they ran out of businesses, ran out of construction work. What they did is they opened a curry fish head uh, in uh, Sepang, in uh, Nilai, where the airport was. Thriving business today. So Until you see, the- right? Yeah, wow. yeah. Crisis, but then they 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 had some savings, turn it into this restaurant business, and yeah, you know, I mean, it's very hard to find the article today. I mean, I read that probably when I was like a, a university student in the early two thousands, and then and that. Yeah, you but know, it, it's an example. Be an interesting, like, story to talk about if we can talk to them. Yeah, yeah I think I think for me the risk here is that uh if you don't actually have a good plan for what to do with the money, yeah. you're just taking the money because it's there, right? Yeah, so exactly. That, that's the risk, risk of it. With, with any any um, loan, it's, it's the same thing. Um, like I shared some episodes ago, I, I know of this young man who took out eight credit cards, all of them completely maxed up, doing what? Um, drinking every night buying luxury cars, buying luxury bags, you know. So those are the things I think uh, when you consider a loan like this, yes, if the interest rate is low, but if you if you don't put it to good use, then you might as well not take it, right? Yeah. That's exactly. my take. I, I feel like sometimes when, you know, you, you, you get money that you don't plan for, you can mis- mismanage it. Mana from heaven, we call it lah. <laughs> Mana yeah, from heaven think, that 
<laughs> yeah. I'm I'm someone who has that problem as well. And that's why I have a very um small credit card limit. I intentionally made it that way so I don't mm. overspend. spend. And so yeah. sometimes we have to put limits on ourselves so we don't end yes. up in a worse financial situation. I yeah. think when I look at this, yes, um you're not using your EPF to pay off your monthly installments, right? But what if you end up with no money at the yeah. end of it and then your retirement funds are taken out, then what will happen then? Yes. What will you yes. retire with, right? Do you, exactly. do you have a plan B for that, right? It's supposed to help you, but it's almost like you're just taking an advance from your EPF, from your future. Yeah, you're actually advancing. Uh. So yeah. again, a knife cuts both ways, Louis. To mm. to a to a criminal, it can cause harm, but to a trained chef, it's a it's a tool of wonder. So the the instrument itself is neutral, mm. and right. I think the way uh, we we want to end this podcast by saying that yes, understand the mechanics of that, but why to take it out is really how how you can leverage on this facility to actually. And um, yeah, I think best way upskill yourself somewhat somehow start something small to generate some kind of income. Uh, for those of you who, who've lost their jobs uh, because of the COVID pandemic and you know, uh, um, dwindled down your savings, uh, I feel you. I understand. I I was somewhat uh, in that scenario before once. Uh, uh, obviously, it's like I I've been lucky. I worked for an oil and gas company that paid me well, and I saved up quite a bit. But it, it's not an easy, it's not a nice feeling. You know, I, I was in Bali recently um, and I spoke to the Grab car driver that took me to the airport. Mm. Two years, three years, completely burned through his entire, yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. So he's, and he, he, ironically, he upskilled himself. He went to start a food business, a very small food business. It's, it's very pre predominant in Indonesia, you know, a store or whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the little yeah, garage. Yeah. Yeah, so warongs, I think warongs, they call them warongs. Yeah, right? warongs, yeah, yeah. And I think that that is a very good use of, of the money. Mm -hmm. la. Put in the hard work and you know, hopefully it pays off. So yeah, yeah. earn more Do than any 15%. Last yeah, earn more than 15%. Make sure you, you know, whatever you take out, you can make more than the interest rate, like the ceiling yeah. interest rate. 15%. Correct. If yeah. not, mm, think about it. Okay. Yes. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing your insights. I hope that uh the audience has found this episode useful of course if you have any comments about this loan leave them in the comment sections below see yeah. you guys again in the next episode see you guys bye bye